Hi, Drew. Oh, Hoda, I mean, you are, it's amazing that you wrote now a book that, you know, we can look at every morning because we also watch you on television every morning. And even when you have to deliver the facts and it's our civic duty to understand what's going on in the world, you still exude positivity and hope. And you have been kind enough to bring people into your life and your experience, which just makes us feel like we know you all the more. And then that comes back and like folds into the omelet. So when we're watching you every day, it's like, okay, I know this person. I feel safe with this person. I trust this person. This person is a human being. They're full of grace. And it's just an amazing line that you manage to straddle every day. You just said it folds into the omelet. I could listen to you all day. That's so beautiful. Um, and thank you, because I think, you know, it's funny. Sometimes it's easy to share the good stuff in your life, but you don't want to share the crummy stuff. And, you know, having kids was a great joy for me and sharing that was effortless for me. Um, when I was sick at one point, uh, when I was working at NBC with breast cancer, I was determined to put that deep in my pockets and not share that because I didn't want to be that person. And I remember distinctly meeting somebody on a plane and he asked me why I was wearing a, a compression sleeve on the plane. And I told him that I had cancer. Um, but I said to him, I hope that's not how you remember me. And he said, what's wrong with you? He said, Having cancer is part of you. It's like working at NBC or getting married or graduating college. He said, let me give you some advice and you can go to sleep. And he said, don't hog your journey. It's not just for you. And I sat in that moment with this complete stranger and realized that I had just changed the path of my life. Like, what good is it? He said, you can put your stuff deep in your pockets and take it to your grave or you can help someone. Like, those are your choices, A or B, choose. And when he said that, I was so struck by the fact that I wanted to hide the bad parts of my life. And suddenly I felt lifted and lighter. And I mentioned it at work when I'd kept it a secret and I said it out loud. And then it was, and then all of a sudden it was, I found that it really was helping people. It shaped me, it didn't define me, but it, you, can, it can, you can still help people with it. Well, and the way that, you are sharing your life and your journey. It means so much to people. And the other day you just um, announced that you filled out paperwork to adopt a third child. We did, we did. May I ask well, what inspired that decision? You know what? I was sitting with Joel, who by the way has a grown daughter who just graduated law school, so know where we are here. And I said to him, like, we have a lot of love in this house. I said, do we have space for more love? I said, yes, we do. I said, would our family be enhanced? Yes, it would. You know, are there children who need us to? Yes, there are. Every answer was yes. Look, it's not in our hands now. We fill out the paperwork and say, you know, it's in God's hands, like come what may. I just know that your heart's ability to expand blows my mind. You can fit so much love in there. It's true. When I had Olive and then I found out, you know, I was going to have Frankie, I was like, oh, <laughs> uh, how does this work? And then it just, your heart does it get works. bigger. And I know yes. that you've touched countless women with your story. In fact, um, we have a little surprise for you, if that's okay. Um, one of them has yeah. a very special message for you, actually. Take a look. I'm a mom to three by adoption, Asher who's five, Zane two, and Zara one. And I can remember hearing Hoda say, when the child that's meant to be yours finally finds you, it's as if a puzzle piece clicks into place and it's as if they've always been with you, always been a part of you. <laughs> it's as though she's speaking through the camera to all of us who've walked this journey. I can remember trying to meet Hoda to get our copy of I've Loved You Since Forever signed. But as luck of mom of two small kids would have it, Nap time interfered and I couldn't get to meet her. <laughs> I just want her to know how much she means to me and the adoption community at large and how amazing she is for speaking her truth and for being so open about this manner of family building. Thank you, Hoda. We love you. 
Wave bye. Bye. Oh, um, if it's okay, oh, I thought I could help facilitate a, a missed <laughs> sliding doors moment. Hi, Samantha. Hi, Drew. Oh, hi, Samantha. I'm so excited. Oh my to God. Here. This is awesome. I know, I'm oh. almost crying up too. Oh my gosh, choosing adoption, man. That's awesome. Well, I just have to say thank you, Drew, for connecting us. And Hoda, I've been waiting for this opportunity to be able to speak to you and tell you how much, not only you mean to the adoption community, but how much your words have had an impact on our lives. You know, your words, when you spoke your words, and I read them in print and I heard them in your interview with Sandra Bullock, and I broke down into a puddle of tears because when you talk about the flood of emotion that you feel when your child finally finds you, it took me back to the moment Asher was born. And again, I was confronted with your, your words and, and I was inspired by them when we were presented the opportunity to adopt Zara. You know, we had two kids. We thought we were done. Two perfect little boys, yeah. a little pair of brothers. And when Zane was seven weeks old, his birth mom texted me and said, guess what? And I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> and my husband and I had almost the same conversation that you just spoke about having with Joel. Like, geez, I, I, we have love in our hearts for three kids, but can we do this? I mean, Zane is seven weeks old. He's not sleeping. He doesn't hold a bottle. He can't sit up on his own. Can we do this? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. we just heard your voice in our heads. You know, when the perfect child that's meant to be yours finds you, they will arrive right on time. And it doesn't matter how old your next youngest is. It doesn't matter if you're in your 30s, 40s, or 50s. It doesn't matter. And your message of positivity and hope just inspired my family to be what it is today. So thank you. Thank you, Samantha. I'm going to send you a book. I know you weren't at the book signing, but I'm going to get you one, okay? Drew's going to hook us up. Yes, I will <laughs> happily be your liaison. Oh. Thank you, Samantha, for coming Thanks, on and Samantha. sharing such beautiful feelings oh, and words with you. Hoda. Thank you so much. Thank you, Hoda, for everything you do. We love Thank you. Thank you, Samantha, for what you just did. Wow. Love, Thank you. Love you. I Thank love you, you so much. And I'm going to love up on you every morning. Because you know what? Also, don't. This is something I've been telling myself recently. And until I got your book, I was searching for like poem a day on apps. And it was sort of working, but it wasn't. I asked myself, please don't look at your phone first thing in the morning anymore. Yes. That cannot be your first thing. You have Thank found you. the solve and the answer to a more spiritual, open-minded, better intended life. This really is important. Thank you, Drew. Thank you, Hoda. Thank you so much.